little uh, video tutorial about raw edge applique. We, as you'll see if you look through our patterns, love using cuddle fabrics for raw edge applique. There's a few reasons for that. Um, the biggest one is that we are just a smidge lazy. And when you use cuddle fabrics, you don't have to do anything special to turn your edges under. So if you're using cotton and you don't want your your appliques to fray, you have to turn the ends of your cotton or turn the edges of your cotton under and then sew it. And that's just a whole extra step that we just don't want to do. So we love using cuddle because you can just cut it and it will fray and it doesn't actually fray. It just, you cut the knit on the backing and it creates these little fibers that fly everywhere. Mom lovingly refers to it as cuddle dust. Um, and it, that will come off when you first cut it and you kind of throw it everywhere and make a huge mess of your house. But after that, it will never fray again. So you can just use a straight stitch and sew your applique down and never have to worry about it looking any different than the very first time you cut it. So when you're doing raw edge applique, there's a few things you need. Uh, the first one is your design that you're gonna applique. And when you're doing applique like this, you'll want your design to be the mirror image. You want your tracing guide to be the mirror image of how you want your final design to be. So you can see how the kitty is flipped and the little bat is flipped and so is the pumpkin. Um, the next thing you'll need is some sort of double-sided fusible web. Mom loves light steam seam too. Um, you can usually find it in these little packets. It comes as little, like, I don't know what size sheets these are, but they come as little sheets that honestly they fit really nicely over um, an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and you can trace your design onto, onto here. Or I personally like the Wonder Under 805. Um, it's just personal preference, but either way, you'll end up with something that looks like this, where it has kind of a waxy paper. And then the steam seam has two, two pieces of waxy paper. And in the center, there's a little sticky web or a sticky mesh. And this is what you're actually going to be putting on the back of your fabric. The 805 just has one layer of waxy paper and then the mesh. The next thing you'll need is a pen or a pencil. I like to use both actually. Um, when I'm tracing something that I'm going to be putting on the back of black fabric, I like to use a pencil because a pencil shows up better against uh, black. And when I'm using anything but black, I like to use a pen because once again, it shows up a little bit better and don't feel like it disappears as much. Um, when you use the iron and you're touching it, you can smudge your lines and they can kind of disappear on you. With a pen, it doesn't do that quite as much. You will get blue or whatever color ink you're using all over your hand. Cause like I said, it's waxy paper. So it takes a while to dry um, and you'll end up with ink smears, but you'll end up with pencil smears too. So just be prepared to wash your hands after. Then you'll need paper scissors and sewing scissors. I honestly can't remember if one of these is paper scissors and one is sewing scissors, so we'll find out when I start cutting and one of them doesn't work. I think this might be paper scissors. We'll see. And you need a project to iron your applique to or to attach your applique to. This is our little mug rug. It's a new pattern coming out. This is our Halloween mug rug. There's two versions. This is one of them and it's going to have a little bat. So we're going to teach you how to do the little bat on here. And then you need an iron and an ironing board, which I'm not bringing over here to show you. Just know you need an iron and an ironing board. And if you're using, um, it's really a good idea anytime you're using nice fabrics, but especially if you're using kettle for your appliques, you're going to want a pressing sheet because kettle is made out of polyester. And if you put an iron directly on it, it will melt. So you need something, whether it's this or just a tea towel, um, you need something in between your iron and your fabric so you don't melt your fabric. And with that, we will get started. 
Okay, so the first step when doing your applique is to trace your design onto your steam, onto your double-sided fusible web. I'm using the Wonder Under 805. Um, as you can see from our little design here, the bat requires two different colors of fabric, black and yellow. And you have all your little designs here. They're layered how you're gonna put them when you're done. So when you're going to trace it though, the eyes need to be out of yellow and the little body needs to be out of black. So you're gonna have to trace each of these little designs separately onto your paper. When you're tracing onto your paper, remember how I mentioned that there's a waxy side and a kind of a rougher side that has the fusible web on it? You're gonna trace onto the, the waxy side. And if you're using um, steam to seam, you're gonna open up, you're gonna take your piece of steam to seam, and since it has two layers, you should be able to trace on this side with the grid lines, but steam machine likes to sometimes jump from the side it should be on and the side it shouldn't be on. So you just wanna make sure that you're tracing onto the side that has the sticky attached to it, which in this case is the grid side. So this one is attached well. And, but just know that you're gonna trace on the opposite side of the fusible web, which is why you're so as I mentioned before, when I'm tracing a design that's gonna go onto black fabric, so the little bat's body, I like to use a pen. So we'll trace the bat with a pen. And the positioning on your uh, fusible doesn't really matter. So just use it up as best as you can. So you can see I've kind of squished my bat into this weird little corner that I have here. Oh, and something I didn't mention, and should have, is on all of our appliques, if the direction matters, so the only time usually the direction doesn't matter is if it's a circle, um, if the direction of your fabric, the nap, matters, we put a little line here, and it's this line here, it's called a nap line. And so you'll want to transfer that little arrow as well. That tells you which way you want the fur to go on your, on your cuddle, or if you're using a cotton, that's the direction you'll want your print to go. Or you can just completely disregard the nap line and do whatever you want because you're the boss. So go for it. <laughs> We have the bat body. The next step is we want his eyeballs. And if I just trace his eyeballs here, that's not gonna work because I can't cut out his eyeballs from inside of here. I mean, I could, but it would be a pain in the butt and we don't wanna do that. So you're gonna just shift your fusible slightly and you're gonna trace one little eyeball. And actually, since these eyeballs are so close together, I'm actually just gonna connect them and do them as one piece because they're tiny and that will be easier. And we're gonna put the little nap lines there. And then you can see that on my design, I have these two tiny little spots that are two little black pupils. If you really feel ambitious, you can trace those and, sorry, my son is waking up. You can trace those and cut those out of black. What I'm gonna do is use black embroidery thread or um, pearl cotton and make a French knot there to put those little dots in because that will just be easier than cutting out two tiny itty bitty circles. So then the next step is to cut loosely around these little designs using our paper scissors. And I'll show you that in a second after I go rescue my son. I found my paper scissors, so we're gonna cut loosely around our design. And when I say loosely around our design, I just mean you wanna leave some of your fusible web around the edges. The reason that we do this is it makes it a lot easier to cut out your finished design and have fusible behind the entire thing. 
if you cut directly on this line right now, it's going to be really hard to get it placed onto your fabric and make sure that your fusible doesn't shift and that you're not having your edges without fusible or making sure that your edges have fusible under them. So this way you just fuse a little bit more to the back of the fabric and you'll have nice crisp edges that won't shift or roll on you while you're trying to sew it down, which makes everything a little easier. So I cut out the fat body and now I'm gonna cut out around the little eyeballs because remember they're going on two different colors of fabric. So there we go. We have, we're almost ready to start applicating. So we rescued my little son from his nap. So if you hear any odd noises from the other side of the camera, that's what they are. So we've cut loosely around our design. And now the next step is to put it onto our fabric. And when you're putting it onto cuddle, or if you're using a cotton that has a print or, um, just in general, if your fabric has a nap or a grain, we have these, like I mentioned, we have these little marks that tell you the direction that the nap should go. And I, the, the reason for that is just because we're now cutting this piece out of this fabric and this piece out of this fabric, if you follow this line, all of your fabric grains and naps or prints are all gonna go in the same direction instead of being all scattywampus or crazy all over. If that's the look you want, go for it. If you don't care about nap lines, don't worry about it. But the way to test for nap um, with cuddle, the easiest way to do it is to rub your fabric and see what happens to it. So you can see when I rubbed it that way, it looks like what happens to a cat when you rub its fur the wrong direction. It doesn't make the fabric very happy, just like it doesn't make the cat very happy. So you want happy fabric and happy cats. So we're gonna rub it that way and we know that's down. And that is the direction that we want this little arrow to follow. Now, this happens pretty much in every single class we ever teach. And it's happened to me and it's happened to mom and it's happened to Kira that you're testing the nap and you get all excited and you're like, yes, I got it, I figured it out, it goes this way. And then you take it just like this and you walk over to the iron and you iron it down. Don't do that. Don't make the mistake that we've made so many times. Don't do that. You want to put it on the back side of your fabric. So you're gonna flip it so that you know that the nap is still going this way, still going the way you thought it was. And you're gonna line up your this is really hard to do upside down, so I'll have to check this when I'm done and make sure that I did this right, that that's straight. It's hard to tell upside down. But you're gonna line it up like that, and you can see, hopefully, in the camera, that I have my little lines here that I traced, and then I have a whole bunch of extra, well, not a whole bunch, but a little bit of extra fusible. With the bat, it doesn't seem to have mattered. And this is part of why mom likes the steam seam better because the steam seam tends to hold together better. You can see that with my eyes, when I cut out the, the little eyes, the two pieces came apart. So now I have to kind of line those up a little bit. Again, see, and we have the nap going this way. But now I have to try and make sure that these stay lined up when I take it over to the iron. And if I had cut directly on my eye, eyeball lines the first time, it would be a lot harder to make sure that I have fusible behind the entire design when I go to cut it. So this just makes your life a lot easier when you're doing this step so that you don't have to be quite as precise about making sure that your pieces didn't fall apart and that if they did fall apart, you get them lined up perfectly again. So I'm going to take this over to the iron and remember that I mentioned a pressing cloth this is what my pressing cloth looks like. And when I take it over to the iron, I'm gonna lay it on the iron just like this. I'm gonna make sure that my nap lines are actually going the right direction since, like I said, it's hard to do upside down. But you'll lay it under the on the ironing board just like this, cover it with your pressing cloth, and then you're gonna iron it on, with the polyester cuddle, we like to use like a medium high 
for probably around five seconds. You really don't need to do it very long on this step because you're just trying to make sure that the fusible transfers from the wax paper to the back of your fabric and hooks those three layers together, the wax paper, the fusible, and the fabric, because the next step after that is to cut directly on your lines. So this part you're not trying to make permanent. None of the fusible is gonna be permanent. Um, that's why we still stitch around it. But getting it really well fused is gonna be more important after you cut around your design. So you can see I have it ironed on. I have the yellow iron to the, I have the little eyes ironed to the yellow. I have the bat ironed to the black. And it's not going to be super, I mean, you can see that I can kind of peel that back a little bit. That's okay. Um, cause we don't need it to be perfect at this point, but we're going to cut right on those lines that we traced earlier. Now, so when you're, Cutting through cuddle, you'll find that because it has a little bit of fluffiness, which is what makes it so much fun and so pretty when you're finished, your edges the first time that you cut it won't always be so ideal. They won't always look necessarily how you want them to because the fur kind of gets pushed out of the way by the scissors and it it just ends up in, you know, looking like it had kind of a, a rough night and woke up with some serious bedhead. So you'll do your initial cut around, or at least this is how we usually do it. You do your initial cut around and then you'll fluff out the fur and get off all the cuddle dust that you can. And then take a look at your edges and decide, hmm, are there any spots that need to be cleaned up or straightened a little bit or I just don't really like the look of, ooh, did I trace that a little bit wonky and now my bat doesn't look how I want it to look. You know, just don't assume that the first time that you cut it, it's perfect. Go ahead and clean it up and make the edges look the way that you want them to look for your finished product. Mm -hmm. first time and you can hopefully see how much little fuzz is created on the edge and like I said that's not actually the fabric fraying that's just the fact that cuddle is made with a knit backing and if you've ever knit anything you know that it's made with little loops of fibers that are just looped inside of each other and so this has little loops of fibers that then have these long fluffy fibers attached to them so when you're cutting through those loops, you're releasing some of the fibers. And so what I was saying is we like to go around the edges and pull off those loose, loose fibers, you know, have a nice confetti party of cuddle dust, as mom calls it. So you can see what really happened to your edges. And now with my bat, you can tell that right here, especially along the bottom, see how this edge, you can see it even better if I turn it around, see how this edge is kind of fluffy and hangs down past my my cutting line. That's what I'm talking about when I say you want you might want to go around and clean up your edges a little bit. Cuz while this doesn't look terrible, it also just doesn't look as crisp and as clean as say this edge. So I'm just going to go back and from the back side, I press the cuddle down to get it flattened so I can see the edges that are just a little bit long and I just go around and I give the fur a little trim, just a little haircut, fix up that bed head. This is not how I recommend fixing your bed head. Um, I would not take scissors to your bed head and fix it that way. But seeing as this guy can't really take a shower and fix his scissors is the way to go. So there we go, see? Now he looks all circular and nice and the little edges are very crisp. So now we're gonna do the eyes. Okay, 
to your project. In our case, our project is our Halloween mug rug. And I want to put my little bat over here in this corner. So when you're placing your applique, you wanna make sure that you're taking into consideration any seam allowances or additional things that are gonna be happening with your project after this. So say you're putting it on a pillow, right? You wanna make sure that you have your applique far enough in that when you sew the front and the back together, you're not catching your applique in the seam, unless that's what you wanna do. Um, for this, we're gonna end up putting a binding on it. So we just wanna make sure that we keep the applique far enough away from each of the edges that it's not gonna get trapped in our binding. So we had those snap lines on here and your little drawing that comes with your tracing guide will help give you an idea of how, how your bat should be placed or how your applique should be placed on to your project. So we can see here, if I flip this around so that you can see, this is how we traced it, right? But we want the bat facing the other direction when we go to attach it to our project. So I have him lined up just like this guy and the eyes are gonna go right there, which is all great, right? We know what we wanna do. So this seems good, right? Let's go, why not? No, the next step is we have to peel off the waxy paper. And hopefully we had our iron on just long enough that it transferred our fusible web to the back of our fabric and will release from the waxy paper, which as I say that, now it's trying to still stick together. And if you're having this problem, which is what the problem that I'm having, it probably just means you didn't leave your iron on long enough. Um, so I'm actually gonna go take this over to the iron and put it on just a little bit longer and then I'll come back and try and peel it off. Okay, so now that I've ironed that again, um, you can see I'm gonna peel the wax paper off of my design. And if it, if it is in fact, you know, not coming off cleanly, just make sure you go slowly and use your your thumb or your fingers to hold the fusible down against your fabric and slowly peel your wax paper off. Make sure, and see, you can see that part was still trying to stick to the wax paper instead of to my fabric. So you just wanna go slow and kind of guide it. Make sure that it stays connected to the side that you want it to stay connected to, which at this point is your fabric. So now we have our kettle with our double-sided fusible all ready to go onto our project. And you can see when I did that, it released a little bit more cuddle dust. Once again, it's not fraying. That little bit of cuddle dust was just um, held down by the fusible at that point. And so now that I've kind of roughed up the edge of the fusible, it's just letting a few more of the fibers release. And once they are, are all off, all the ones that are the, the backing is cut from, then it won't fray again. So don't, don't worry about it continuing to make this cuddle dust. This is just what happens right now. It won't happen forever, I promise. So we're gonna line it up where we want it. And another reason that my mom loves steam seam um, is because steam seam will it's very sticky and so at this point it will honestly stick to your project and kind of stay where you want it to stay better than the 805. Um, it's just all personal preference. So with me I'll just have to be a little bit more careful and gentle with my project as I move it from here to the iron that I don't shift things. The other thing that you can decide what method you prefer if you like to say, okay, this is where I want my bat. I'm gonna go iron my bat, and then I'm gonna sew around the edge, and then I'm gonna add the eyeballs. Absolutely fine. I think that's typically the way my mom likes to do it. Uh, my sister and I both like to layer the whole thing, iron the whole thing in place all at once, and sew around everything all at once. It's, once again, just personal preference, but since 
I like to do everything at once. I'm gonna go ahead and peel the back of my eyeballs off and put my eyeballs generally where I want them. I'm going to flip this around so I can actually see what it looks like instead of you seeing what it looks like. I'm gonna put his little eyeballs in place and say, yeah, yeah, I like that right there. So then the next step after this is to take it back over to the iron and we're gonna use our pressing cloth and make sure that your pressing cloth is clean and doesn't have any of those black cuddle dust pieces on it that are gonna transfer to your yellow eyeballs. But then you're gonna take it over to the iron, place your pressing cloth on. Once again, no steam, just hold it in place. Don't move it around. And we're gonna do maybe like 10 seconds again. And as you can see, if it doesn't stick the first time, don't be afraid to take it back and um, iron it just a little bit longer. But it's always better to build up to making sure that the whole thing is stuck instead of holding the iron too long in one position and um, melting your fabric. Because even though you're using a pressing cloth, you can still melt your fabric if you leave the iron there too long. Trust me, I know from experience. So just take it slow. Um, try not to keep the iron on there for very long at one time, like five to 10 seconds max. And we'll come back when this little guy is hooked down with the iron. Okay, so I was just over there ironing and um, mom made a good point to say she never actually does about 10 seconds. I think the directions usually tell you 10, sec 10 to 15 seconds, but they're assuming you're using cottons, not meltable polyester. So we probably do about five seconds, five to eight seconds maximum at one time. I usually try and do about five seconds and then pull it off, give it a little bit of time to cool down so you don't singe your fingers, but then I just test the edges like this really gently with my fingertip to see if the edges are hooked down. And if they're not rolling up under my fingertip under gentle pressure from my fingertip, I know I'm good and I can stop ironing. Um, so that's my little tip about when you stop ironing. The next step is gonna be to add a straight stitch because while this seems like it's hooked down really well, you can see it's not falling onto the table and you saw my little finger test that it didn't go anywhere, um, it's not permanent. So the second you wash it or move it too much, it will fall off. So to hold this in place permanently, we're just gonna stitch Around the edges, we call it with a top stitch. Top stitch, thanks mom. <laughs> um, we use a top stitch, which basically just means an eighth of an inch or less, just as close as you can get to that outside edge. You're gonna stitch with a straight stitch right around that outside edge to hold your design in place. <laughs> so in terms of thread color, you can see I'm gonna actually use this really light gray. And you might think that that would be an issue with the black fat, but it's not going to be. Because of the pile of the fabric, the gray will get buried and it won't show up in the yellow eye either. So this just lets me use the same thread without having to change the thread in my sewing machine, which honestly makes my life easier, which if you hadn't figured out, we're a little bit lazy and we're all about tricks to make life a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread my machine and then I'll show you how I straight or top stitch around my design. On the bottom, I have a black, but once again, it doesn't matter. And honestly, having a contrasting color on the back because this is gonna get covered up is gonna make my life a little bit easier in case I do mess up because I'll be able to see my stitching lines instead of on the front where I really won't be able to see them at all. Which is also a top tip for working with cuddle. Often you want to use a coordinating fab or coordinating thread with cuddle a lot of times. It's actually a little bit easier and will make your life a little easier to use a contrasting thread so that if, heaven forbid, you have to undo something, which never happens to me, just kidding, it happens all the time, you, you'll be able to see your stitches to find them to unpick them. Or if in mom's case, you'll be able to hand them to your husband who will be able to see them to unpick them because she never unpicks her own mistakes. Okay, so I like to start with the eyeballs um, because like I said, it's not in place permanently. 
So while I'm sewing around the bat, odds are some of the smaller designs are going to be more likely to shift on me. And since I don't want my eyeballs to shift out of the spot that I chose for them, I'm gonna go ahead and sew them in place first because I can kind of readjust the body of the bat if it moves on me and I don't like where it is. A little bit crazy. They're not perfect circles. They don't look particularly beautiful. That is not a problem because like we said, Cuddle is so forgiving. I'm going to grab a pin or actually I'm just gonna use my pencil because it's here and I can reach it. And first, first things first, I'm gonna pull my threads through to the back and I'm gonna tie them off in a knot. to make sure that this stays secure without having to backstitch. out the cuddle that got pulled under my stitching lines and then you'll be able to see that whether your lines were a perfect circle or not and the fact that my thread wasn't yellow but was in fact light gray truly does not matter and it's not a big deal so here we go Oh, huh. mom got me a pin, thanks. So there you go, see? Now you can see that my scatty wampus lines that weren't actually circle, circular, doesn't matter. And my eyeballs are gonna stay right where I want them to. So now let's do the body of the bat. knot um, because no matter how many times I try it never quite turns out consistently with a French knot no matter, you know because you wrap you wrap the thread around the needle three times and go back down and I don't know even if I wrap it the same number of times it never turns out quite consistent for me so what I do I have embroidery floss I don't know if you can still see that. I have embroidery floss. I've just knotted one end. Um, and I have a nice big needle that has a sharp point and then a nice big um, eye so that I can get thick embroidery floss through it. I have this here because like I mentioned before, it can be hard to push through multiple layers of cuddle and fusible and um, batting. So I, I like to have something hard and I don't want to mess up my nice table. So I have a little piece of a tin lid here so that I can press down on that without hurting my own finger. But what you're going to do is where I want my eyeballs and I want them right here next to each other. I'm going to put my needle in from the back and use my um, tin lid to push my needle through so that I save my fingers. And then what I do is I bring the thread down 
and I take my needle and lay it on top of the thread and then I go under. So I have it looped once and we're going to go up and around, up and around and back down. And we've basically created a little figure eight and I can look up what this knot is actually called and I'll put a link to it in the, the video description or I'll try to so that you can get a better idea of hopefully a close-up of how to do that um, so it's not quite as confusing because I know that was pretty quick and can be a little confusing if you've never done it before once again just using I went right back down very very close to where I came up not right down the same hole but very close so that I can pull this tight and we've got a little circular knot right there so that's one little pupil now let's go ahead and add the second one we're gonna come up just to the other side but very close once again because I like my animals to be cross-eyed I think it's cute so I'm gonna go back up using the tin lid and then we're gonna do this a second time where we have the thread coming down towards us then you lay your needle on top slide it under bring your embroidery floss or thread back up loop it over your needle so now hopefully you can see that I, I don't know but you can see it kind of makes a figure eight I'm gonna pull it tight onto my needle I'm gonna stick the needle back in very close to where I came up as close as I can get without going up or going down the same hole actually I didn't like that placement so let's try that again there we go I'm gonna use the tin lid to save my fingers push that through and then as we tighten this down hopefully we'll get another knot that's almost the exact same size which we did which is why I like that knot a little bit better than the French knot so I'll try and find out what that's called again and I'll put a note in the video description but there you go we're just gonna add a little knot here on the back to tie that off use our scissors Cut this short and now we have two little pupils in our bat and our bat looks like a happy little guy ready to go and party on Halloween so thank you for joining us for this uh, quick and easy tutorial for raw edge applique using cuddle you can always check out the rest of our tutorials on our YouTube channel or head over to our blog at www.mckeemanamusers to see more of our projects and head over to our shop and find all sorts of cute little projects like this or pillows or blankets or really just anything adorable because that's what we do. Uh, thank you and see you next time. Until then, happy sewing! Is it recording or not? I don't think so.